So I had been caught. It seemed. Yurak was there in the throne room, but Patat wasn't. My uncle didn't come alone, and before I could skip away, massive hands lifted me upside down. I never thought to see any of those creatures again. Balls. While I hung there, memories of our previous encounter came back to me. Things clicking in place. It had spoken about being trained. Perhaps the training took place in the castle. Either way, Yurak had moved Patat, but did, for some reason, allow me to speak for him one last time. When walking through the castle, we passed some people arguing loudly and... This is Nidak, my adventure. Written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 46 Caught Nidak stiffened at hearing the deep and rumbling voice which unmistakably belonged to her uncle. She didn't hesitate, and without turning around to the source of the voice, she bent through her knees and began the skipping process. Ah, ah, ah! None of that now! Yudak mocked her at the same time another, even heavier voice breathed in her ear. Hello, princess! A large purple hand swatted one of her arms while another hand circled both of her ankles together with the dress's hem. Before her mind cleared of the creature's surprise appearance, she dangled upside down in front of the slurp, her eyes leveled to his crutch. She couldn't feel relief at seeing it wear a cloth, because one of the balls had escaped confinement, the fiery orange hairs nearly touching her nose as she swung back and forth. Better than all three balls? She thought to herself. It didn't comfort her. She craned her neck to look around. So you have been coming here every evening. Ha! Sneaky little niece of mine. Very daring, too. Ha! Very daring indeed. Surrounded by people who are looking for you. No more. Your little friend Gorak is hidden away now. Squares, slurp. Turn her around. The slurp did so, right in time to prevent Nedak from doing something she really hadn't wanted to do to try escaping. Squeezing hairy, oversized balls was always the last resort. But I am not a bad person, Yoda continued. I will let you talk to him one last time. <laughs> Don't get anything in your smart little head. We will move him around daily. Ha! You won't get the chance to skip to him again. Come on. The slurp dropped Nadak, but squeezed the back of her neck straight away, lifting her up and guiding her to follow Yodak. Had Patat betrayed her? How else had her uncle known about her coming here? Something else he said made her scrunch up her brows. Did he mean to let her go? It somehow felt like that was exactly his intention. No one spoke as they walked. Nidak tried to keep track of where they were, but the castle's hallways soon all became part of a labyrinth in her mind. At one point, they passed an area where the castle looked like a construction site. Two people argued against each other in a room, shouting loud enough to be heard throughout the hallway. This is how Lord Pedrin wants it! See? This is how he explained! Come on! You were there as well when he said what it looked like! A high-pitched female voice yelled. Water sprinkling out of a round metal device sprouting from the wall. Does that sound reasonable to you? The Lord had been going through a lot. We can be safe to assume he might have been imagining things. The male voice didn't shout, but was loud enough by itself. Imagining things? The female voice spotted. We have been through this before. It's the same thing every night. If you didn't insist on working at night, we could have scheduled time with him again and discussed it all anew. Instead, we've been wasting our time. 
Nina couldn't hear any more as they turned another corner. So Winnie wanted to install showers in the castle? Nina guffawed aloud, earning an angry stare from Yodak. The slurp gave her neck an extra squeeze, hard enough to make Nina grunt. She couldn't help keeping the image of the workers out of her mind, trying to invent showers without knowing what they were. The more Nina thought about it, the more hilarious she found it. If they had been given only a description of what a shower looked like, without any technical explanation. Occasional giggles found their way out, and the more she tried to contain it, the more she needed to laugh. She vaguely realized the peril of her current situation caused her brain to misfire like this, but that knowledge did nothing to stop the laughter. I am not doing it anymore like this! I am going to bed, and tomorrow we will do it my way, and we will hear out Lord Pedrin again. Surely he has more to say about it. The voice broke out from behind them, followed by a door slamming and the obvious sound of the whole doorway collapsing. That was the last straw for Nadek. Her laughter could no longer be held in. Tears streamed over her face as she gasped for air in between laughs. The slurp tried to shake her out of it, but it only made her howl harder. Yoda growled at her several times to be quiet. With every growl, she managed a second of silence before snorting her way back into full-out frenzied laughter. Nidak thought she saw the corners of Yoda's mouth tug upwards. Laughter like that was contagious after all. Keep her quiet, Yoda grumbled towards the slurp. No sound in the next area. No sound in the... N- the slurp turned her face into its big belly. Her nose crunched slightly as it got squished. Her whole face felt sucked into the blubber. She couldn't breathe. As the last of her laughter died... The shakes of giggles were indistinguishable from the trembles to fight against the lack of oxygen. She passed out. The collision against the hard floor shocked her awake. She blinked as she heard Patat demand. What have you burning done to her? If you've heard her grounding, you'll what, Tad? You are not in a position to do anything. Ha! Do not worry about your little princess. She merely had to be contained for a little bit while we walked past Lord Pejuin's quarters. We did not want to wake him up with her laughter now, did we? Huh? There. She. She is awake. You can talk to her one last time. Then you say your goodbyes. Nidak struggled to stand up. The front of her head throbbed. The front of her head throbbed, which she thought of as a lingering side effect of the concussion from a few weeks back. Once she managed to get on her feet, she glared at the slurp and pulled her face at its ugliness. The small, beady eyes combined with a cavity in the form of a nose and the crack of a mouth. She wondered for a second if this was the same slurp that left in the cave asleep from Blackie's burp, but decided it must be another one. The cave slurp had a bunch of overripe pimples. This one seemed to have none. She moved her glare over to her uncle and let it rest on Patat. The Gorak was still in the same cage. He flew a step backward at her stare. What's that grounding for? He demanded. You told him about our meetings? She wanted to make it sound accusatory, but it came out sounding more hurt. Frank, damn it. What burning nonsense is that? Of course I didn't dripping do such a thing. Did he grounding say that to you? Patat turned towards Yodak. I know I don't know who you dripping are anymore, but I never took you to be a full loud grounding liar 
For no reason. Not even now. Nadek, think about it. Why would our burning betray you? The more he spoke, the more guilty she felt. She hadn't actually believed he'd done it. It had merely been the easiest explanation. She felt her expression soften. Ha! Yeah. Very cute seeing you together. You have five minutes to talk. Jurek signaled to the slurp, but it only stared at him vacantly, obviously not understanding what the gesture meant. Step aside, you towering, ugly rock! She won't run. Isn't that right, niece? After a reluctant nod from Nedak, jaws clenched and lips pressed together, he uttered a satisfied, Ha! The slurp took a few steps to stand next to Jodek, who grimaced almost imperceptibly and shuffled aside a bit. What's with those slurps? Nedak asked him. I never heard of them before meeting the one in the forest. Did you take slurps and do something with them? How did you make them speak? Did you go back for the one in the cave yet? Do you really want to use your five minutes to talk about these abominations? It's only four now. Ha! Huh. Judak frowned. Why did you assume we left it in a cave? This is that one. Neda grunted. He was right. She shouldn't waste time on this. Without replying, she turned to Patat, who perked up. He didn't look good. The wings had lost their iridescence, and his slimy skin showed inconsistencies, mottled spots of dull areas covering where there were rainbows before. Nedak stepped closer to him. You look awful. Very grounding observant. It's burning nothing, kid. I'm burning molting soon. It is just a very annoying coincidence. Close your dripping mouth. You look like a burning fish. The familiar quip combined with its lopsided grin set her somewhat at ease. Oh, I should be burning done with this in a week's time. If I'm burning still alive in a dripping week. His black, liquid eyes flickered towards Jodak. You will, Tad. Don't you worry about that. Nadek's uncle said gruffly, almost reluctantly. I won't let them kill you, Nadek whispered on top of him, no matter what. She lowered her voice even more, hoping it was silent enough so Yodek couldn't hear it. Do you remember what I told you about the plan? Patat nodded. Good. I wasn't sure if you'd heard me. You weren't very responsive. About that. Oh, I'm dripping sorry. What burning yurt I could tell me still lingers. But no time to dripping talk about that now. Oh, I grounding remember the plan. And oh, I'm grounding so ready for it. How did Blackie dripping do today? It was perfect. Nedak smiled. People are in awe of the appearance of the dragon and I've heard whispers of many looking forward to the next appearance tomorrow. Enough whispering. Ha! Time's up. Let's go. Nedak heard his slurp come closer again. No! Nedak burst out. That can't have been five minutes already. What in the names of the lines is happening here? A new voice shouted out. Everyone stopped moving. The slurp blocked Nedak's view, but her heart froze in her chest for a moment, replaced by flutters. It seemed she had been knocked out for no reason. Whiny was awake, after all. You have been listening to Nedak, Chapter 46, Caught. Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself, Nedak. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff.
Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nedek and Kitty. Hello, hello. I'm still setting up. Maybe I shouldn't be uh, <laughs> recording just yet. Alright. That's supposed to be there. Supposed to be here. Supposed to be silent. And that's uh, supposed to be here. Shit, I don't have a title yet. What's the title? What's the title? Purple? <laughs> no, what's, what's... what are we going to... Nidak stiffened at hearing the deep and rumbling voice of Yodak, which unmistakably belonged to her uncle. Oh, well, that's, um, good at sitting. I don't know what Yodak's voice... is it this? Is this Yodak's voice? Or is that a little bit silly? The slurp dropped Nadek, but squeezed the back of her neck. <laughs> what a sprinkle laughed every round of medals! Nadek guffawed aloud. A lad. Lurr! Dig a cup in the hair. Nadek guffawed. Guffawed? This is one of those words you always see written, but no one says aloud. Guffawed. 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 All right, internet to the rescue. How the fuck do you pronounce Gafford? Gafford pronunciation, right? Here we go. Gafford. Gafford. So Gafford. Oh, here. Gafford. Gafford. American Gafford. 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 American Gafford. Gafford. Fuck. If I didn't know English at all, I would just read what it says. It would, it would be like, go forward. Need a go forward aloud. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to it. Which she thought of as a lingering side effect of the concussion from a few weeks back. What? A few weeks back. 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 Yurak signaled to the slurp, but it only stared up at him. <laughs> Yurak signaled to the slurp, but it only stared at him. Ah, fuck. 